Sunday afternoon dust devils chased my horse down a trail lined with cattle carcasses and sun-bleached bones. Rattlers and scorpions crossed beneath my Mustang's hooves. I'm four, riding my trike from the black barn to the faded white Nebraska ranch house for ice cream. My mom serves up a cone. Ice cream in my left hand and a silver plastic revolver in my right, I head out to chase down a Wild West outlaw. Before I reach my hoss, a brown devil-horned billy goat steps into my path my dad had roped and drug off from a neighbor's place because it liked to knock the man's kids down. In a well-calculated leap, the goat steals my ice cream, scrapes a hoof down the length of my nose, and makes a break for one of the corrals. I run to the house crying, blood running off the torn skin hanging from my nose. My mom tries to comfort me with another cone, but my dad won't stand for it. He tells me, settle up with that goat first. <laughs> the goat back against the corral boards is enjoying my ice cream. Goddamn goat, I yell through tears and blood, and shout every cuss word a four-year-old shouldn't. I start the, sh the shitting bastard with a hard right to his black, black snout and a strap of latigo around his belly. I, I throw myself cussing onto his bony back, spur his ears with real bronc hooks. The goat trots in circles and tries to slick me off, but he can't shake me. I only let up when blood runs free from spur torn ears. True story. <laughs> Um, the next one is a poem I wrote a couple years ago, and uh, because of who it's about, I said I would never publish it, you know, at least as long as this person's alive, and, but I figured I might as well go ahead and read it if I can't publish it. And it's about the infamous Claude Dallas. Um, I'm stuck in Salina with Brian Horner and a four-fingered friend, a 12 of High Life, and a bottle of Soko. Town singing poncho and lefty on my beat-to-shit stereo. Living on the road, my friend, was going to keep make you free and clean. Sure, Towns is, or sure, I'm sorry. Sure, Claude is instructive here. He and my dad are guzzling wild turkey at home in Washington tonight, talking rank horses, baseball, loner coyotes to get their asses chewed by their own kind. They're talking say a prayer for lefty too kind of talk. And the Claude's the last outlaw of the West. Buckaroo, trapper, gun slick, recently cut loose from Idaho State Penitentiary after a couple breaks for freedom plus 20 years. Claude says you can't ever get to Hemingway unless you have a pushkin first. Dad says Eastern lit crits are faggoty. Claude says that's some Irish wolfhound on the floor. The canine's drunk on good company and dreams of raw moose and elk to chew down. But he lifts his great gray head and growls what may be the first line of a great gonzo song. Claude's the last pure American cowboy, National Geographic says that. Claude's the last true Western outlaw, I say that. And I'll, st and I'll say it standing on your coffee table in black bullhide boots if you're dumb and need it said that way. It gives a real man ch chills to hear Ian Tyson sing Claude's out in the sage tonight. After my mom serves up cheeseburgers, New York steaks, and spinach casserole, they wash down the Safeway bought by Claude Carrot Cake. Claude and my dad phone me and tell me I should be there to laugh and holler. A 26-hour fueled by beer drive could put us there to hear of grizzly, grizzlies, Joy Moist Riatas, Maverick Steers, and my namesake Hall of Famer Luke Appling, who once hit 388 in the American fucking league. It'd be a legendary journey, but the cash is lacking. We needed a big fucking break from school, and we needed it now. So we emptied the bank, maxed out the plastic, and 137 scratch tickets later, we're still in Kansas, students, not desperados. Um, next one is called Beslin, and it's about um, a terrorist attack in a small Russian town. And the deal was it was an Al-Qaeda funded attack, and it was allegedly a trial run for what they're going to do in America. And what they did is they came in, took over a school, held everybody hostage for several days, um, executed all adult males on, as soon as they took over, and uh, just really nasty, ugly stuff. But um, it was something that touched me, and this is the first of probably a couple poems that I will write about it. Uh, this is actually about the children in the aftermath. So here we go. Beslin. Rocket launcher stand out, oversized and aimed to destroy on the Lego schools built by frail nine-year-old men. Water bottles and wildflowers decorate too many young graves. Toy cars and dolls for the children, tear-filled prayers for the rest, 
a double shot vodka for me. In 23 color Crayola, my child still draws a terrace, detailed down to the belted explosives, just to, just to burn them over a single cam candle in the loneliest of rooms. Uh, and then to finish up on a lighter note, here's uh, something I actually just finished up over a drink this morning with lunch. Um, inspired by one of our instructors, Bob Wrigley, who, when his wife was bringing up the issue of him looking like a 70s porn star in pictures of him in the 70s, he said, well, I felt like a porn star. And I was like, shit, I gotta do something with that. So uh, the title is, This Isn't True Love, But We're Keeping an Eye Out For It. My gal just can't squeeze into anything they're selling at Victoria's Secret, but I still felt like a porn star walking the lingerie aisles of Walmart, wrapping my arm around the soft folds of skin flowing over the top of her jeans. She settled on a red corset with matching see-through lace panties, a couple sizes too small for her hips. I love seeing her soft dimpled cheeks bulging from their fabric cage. Back at the trailer, I lit Febreze spring-scented candles on the headboard, emptied our supersized Taco Bell cups from lunch into the sink, and filled them with wine from the box on top of the refrigerator. Then I put in her favorite porn video. Sheepless in Montana always gets her going. She slipped off to the bathroom, and the trailer shook just a bit as she fought her way into the outfit. I was really going to show her I was a much better choice for a husband than that cousin I stole her away from a month ago. <laughs> That was, that was the last time I made love to a woman and how I ended up in this chair. We rocked that trailer so hard it came flying off the blocks and crashed right into the neighbor's yard gnome collection. I broke my back and dislocated my hip. She lost an eye on the Dale Earnhardt Jr. replica trophy. Yeah, I know. This isn't true love. <laughs>